If we could talk to the animals, learn all their languages, maybe take an animal degree. If I conferred with our furry friends, man to animal, think of the amazing repartee. If I could walk with the animals, talk with the animals, grunt and squeak and squawk with the animals, and they could talk to me. Hello and welcome to Pet Watch, a monthly program about the Williamson County Animal Control and Adoption Center in Franklin. My special guest today is Carla Gentry and her dog Ella, who's taking a nap at this point. <laughs> Carla, welcome to Pet Watch. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, Carla is one of our exceptional volunteers. She has uh, grown and gone above and beyond just uh, walking dogs or uh, socializing animals and has grown with us at the shelter and been there a couple of years. As, when did you start helping out at Animal Control here in Franklin? I believe it was about a year and a half ago or so. Okay. And, and as usual, did one, of, one of your kids led you into this mm -hmm. venture, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell me how that happened. Uh, Cammie adopted Ella as a puppy, as a baby. Ella That's was your found, daughter, Cammie? Um, my okay. oldest daughter, Cammie. Um, Ella was found behind a dumpster, I believe, <coughs> behind a grocery store. And um, Cammy happened to know someone at Animal Control who told her this: there's this beautiful pit bull you you would love, and and so Cammy went down and and fell in love, of course, and adopted her without my knowledge, and uh, that was fun for a little while. But um, we, of course, once we saw Ella, we fell in love. Now Cammy was volunteering, or had she? Cammy has volunteered there, yes. Yeah. Okay. And so when you then you learned more about Animal Control, and then you became a volunteer. Mm -hmm. I became a volunteer after taking Ella to the dog park and training her and working with her and seeing all the volunteers walking around with the, with the different dogs and mm -hmm. just asking questions and thinking, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful to have Ella and that's where she came from. And I adore her so much that I wanted to give back to the place that, that saved her for me. So. Well, we appreciate it so much. Um, our volunteers today do so much more. Your, your preference being dogs, mm -hmm. and we have plenty of people whose preference is cats, and we've right. separated our training now into um, dog and cat mm -hmm. um, classes. There are some people that like to do both, but we find that they usually end up leaning one way most of the time right. in their work. Um, and uh, now you're actually attending some of our mm -hmm. dog volunteer training yes. sessions. Yes. And do you share with the people at that class? I do. I always, Mark um, asks me usually to share my perspective of being a volunteer at Williamson County Animal Control some of my experiences and what it means to me to be there. That's great. Yeah. And it's always good to hear a story about a, a person in the community who finds an abandoned mm -hmm. animal. And um, I'm sure it was, Ella was tiny yes, at the time. And now she's a good, what, she's how many pounds? Almost 80. 80 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's a sweetheart. She and uh, we are uh, pleased to have her as our Thank first you. live. Thank well, you for I think inviting we have a cat on the show before. OK, good. But she's our first oh, really? uh, dog, yeah. yeah, to be on the show. Um, what do you know about her origins or her breed? Um, I believe she's American, um, well, she's, I believe she's an Am American Staffordshire Terrier. Okay. Which is a version of a pit bull. Okay. So she's in the Pity family, mm -hmm. as it's now become known. Um, as we know, the public often has a, a very distorted and um, unfair image mm -hmm. of what a pit bull is because in the media we often see only the absolute Worst cases mm -hmm. like dog fighting and highly publicized cases of that, um, which is illegal. Mm -hmm. And those dogs are bred and um, their whole lives, unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, their goal of their owner is uh, to use them for their own gain. Mm -hmm. um, now, there are plenty of pities that are just big sweeties like Ella. Ella mm -hmm. And I think you're sort of an ambassador for yes. uh, the mutt yes. because any dog that comes through the shelter we really don't know, no, we and don't. we don't like to uh, label them because, frankly, we don't know their origins. Right, right. <laughs> uh, we we weren't there when Ella no. got born. <laughs> Was conceived. No. We didn't see the uh, <laughs> the mom and dad no. dog, so right. to speak, and we don't know. Uh, we just know we love her. So, right. Um, and I know she goes everywhere with you. I saw you get out of a small car, and yes. I said, did Ella get out of that little car with you? Yep. That was amazing. We ride with the top down in the summertime. She likes uh, it. Does she... Uh, Go to the dog park? Uh, yes. She yeah. goes to the dog park regularly, yes. Good. Um, what other pets do you have at home? I have Fred. He's a Louisiana Catahoula pit mix that came from the shelter also. That was a failed foster. I, I took Fred home because he'd been returned, and I yeah. thought, you know, he's the sweet dog. I can't imagine what his problems are. And then Eleanor fell in love with him, so mm -hmm. we had to keep Fred. So she was 
Eleanor was there first. Mm -hmm. So okay. And then I also have a, a thirteen year, almost thirteen year old Maltese that's about seven pounds, and she tell, tells them, you know, how fast they can walk and where they can go and everything. <laughs> oh, so yeah. she's the leader of the pack, yes. the Maltese. She, yes, the okay. tiny one. Well, I'd like to meet her. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. She's a piece of work. <laughs> she is. She can own more ground than a standing army, usually. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. That's funny. Man. That's funny. Well, she was there first, right? Yes. Okay, yes. so she's the oldest and she knows the territory. Mm -hmm. um, and you have a big backyard yes. with large dogs. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much a necessity to have some mm -hmm. room for exercise or you will find right. yourself at the dog park out of necessity every right. day. <laughs> right. um, now tell me, when you were growing up, did you have a lot of pets? Yes, I always had pets growing up. Mm -hmm. What, did you have dogs or um, cats? My first or? dog was a German Shepherd. Um, then I've had all kinds in between, Basset Hound, Golden Retriever. My kids grew up with a Golden Retriever. Um, cats, we've had everything, rabbits. Do you have cats horses. now? We have horses. Yeah. Um, no, we don't have cats right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. So these guys don't have cats in their house, but a lot of people find that dogs and cats get along great. Oh yeah, they do. They do. they get along great. That's good. Yeah. Um, tell me when you when your daughter found this dog mm -hmm. and brought it home, what was your initial reaction? Um, to our initial this reaction. Mm -hmm. What at the time we had an my golden retriever was elderly. She was almost 15 and, mm -hmm. and having a hard time getting around and of course the older Maltese and a Chihuahua mix at the time that my uh, the same daughter had already brought home and um, she calls us and tells us that she's bringing a pit bull home and I had never owned a pit bull or been around I'd been around one maybe but you know and I loved it I thought it was a great dog didn't have a problem and I was just you know we have we have plenty of dogs we don't need another dog and it was a pit bull and I, I just I was upset that she didn't ask permission and and we said no you can't bring it home mm -hmm. So in your mind at that time, you had a little bit of that uh, stereotype mm -hmm. in your head. Yes, and I, having the two little dogs, I even said, Cami, you cannot bring a pit bull. It, it could eat our dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're an ambassador. Now I am uh, here talking to you, Debbie. <laughs> and now <laughs> you're, you were telling me that your neighbor said. <laughs> oh, the neighbors were looking at me funny. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I started getting the comments and the sideways looks. and. And I thought, you know what, I have to make sure this dog is the best dog in the neighborhood. Well, usually when we change people's minds about anything, it's slow and it's mm -hmm. one person at a time. Yes. Um, but just being exposed to a, a, a wonderful, obedient pet like yours s starts to make that change mm -hmm. in people. It does. And, and you said recently your neighbor was joking with you and you and you said, can I bring Ella? And he said, well, will it eat my dog? Yeah. You know, and he was kind of joking because he knows you and right, he, he's right. seen her behave. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we have to kind of get away from that. It's yes. really not funny. No, um, it's not. It's not. And it, it has really hurt my feelings before. The, the, I mean, not kidding, the, the, the discrimination. It, it, it's hard to watch somebody look at your dog funny or make comments, whisper to someone else and point. Yeah. When, you, when I know what a sweetheart my dog is. Right. It, right. it, it really is hard. Yeah, and that's human nature, mm -hmm. and but human nature can change because right. you used to be that person. All right, I have to remember that too. I have to remember that, you know, right. I, I understand. Right, so you can't get angry. You just right. have to think. Educate. Do you, do you want to know more? I'd love to talk mm -hmm. to you. That's a great attitude to have. Right. Because I was reading something the other day about the top dogs for dog bites, mm -hmm. and the American Staffordshire Terrier, which is the technical name for the breed we... Mm -hmm refer to as pitties was not even on it. Right. The top 10 dog bite um, breeds that bite. Mm -hmm. And of course at the shelter it's not a breed atmosphere. <laughs> right. It's not the kennel, American Kennel Club show. Right. Um, and typically an unsocialized um, dog, an unsocialized irresponsible owner, an uh, unsocialized dog from an irresponsible owner is the cause of a dog bite not the dog. Now what in your work at the shelter um, when we get animals in we really don't know a lot about their background. Mm -hmm. uh, we're an open shelter and people are allowed to surrender. A number of our animals come from owner surrenders in the county and others come from strays that nobody ever comes and claims. Uh, we don't know a lot about their lives. When you first meet uh, and come in to walk dogs, mm -hmm. evaluate dogs for us as a volunteer, how do you approach a strange dog, a new dog? The very first thing I do is I walk up to their kennel very calmly and I tell everyone in orientation that, you know, whatever happened in your day to day, you need to leave it outside in the parking lot because they're under a lot of stress in there and they need your calm energy to share with them. So I just stand there calmly at their kennel. I don't make a lot of eye contact. I just stand there and let them smell me because that's what they need to experience first is scent. 
So mm -hmm. I just I stand there very kind, try to share some calm with them, and just stand there, and I let them. That tells them that I understand that you need to first smell me, and I'm respecting you for that. And then secondly, I'm gonna when they show me a little calm behavior, maybe put all four feet on the floor. Sometimes you have to take whatever little tiny second you can get of, of good behavior and go in the kennel. I go in and I just simply stand there, wait for them to calm down. Hopefully they'll calm down. They may or may not to get them leashed up. But I'm also asking for respect in every little thing I do. I showed you respect when I got here today. Now I'm going to ask you for some respect. Mm -hmm. And the Caesar Milano is a popular dog, the dog whisperer mm -hmm. show Cesar that Milan. many people have seen. <laughs> and I know he's someone that you... Uh, aspire to or, yes, or I love admire. Mm -hmm. You love him. You went to see him. When mm -hmm. You told me about your experience of uh, meeting him and yes. going to his lecture here in uh, Nashville recently. And he's the same way. It's whatever energy you are giving mm -hmm. off, the dog will give off. Right. And whatever chaos is happening with your attitude, it transmits mm -hmm. into the dog. It absolutely does. It's like a mirror for the dog. That's so what, you're, what you see, what your get, behavior you're getting from your dog, they're mirroring you. And sometimes they'll mirror each other, which happens a lot at the shelter, too. So you get a false read of, is this dog aggressive, or is it assertive, or is it, you know, what is it showing? It's sometimes mirroring what it's getting. And the dogs that come into the shelter are afraid. They're in mm -hmm. a new setting. And it, it's helpful for people like you that come in and exude some calm over their lives. Mm -hmm. um, it is a stressful environment to be it in is. a shelter. And when the humans show up, everybody gets excited. All the dogs get excited. Right. Um, and I can hear them start barking. I'm, my office is near um, the kennels, and mm -hmm. when they start barking, I know, oh, the volunteers are here. Yeah. It's great, and they're all so excited because they learn that people are coming yes. at certain times of the day, and it just makes you understand even more fully how much the dogs and humans have to give each other mm -hmm. back and forth. Um, we think we're in charge of the dogs, but that not, is not necessarily the fact. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen dogs that mm -hmm. came in that were fri uh, frightened of the shelter atmosphere? Oh, absolutely. And terrified. Changed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Irene, um, who just was recently adopted, I think, last weekend, mm -hmm. um, she was terrified when she got there. I don't know that she'd had much human contact at all, um, but with all our loving volunteers, you know, we, we helped her learn that humans mm -hmm. aren't bad. It's okay, we're not here to hurt you, we're here to help you, we're gonna feed you. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I asked, I asked the volunteers that I work with to not give her a lot of eye contact, not offer your forward facing, that's a little, little um, they, they don't like that. Because you sense offer their that side. she had a fear of mm -hmm. that kind of contact. Mm -hmm. And just, just don't, ex don't ask any expectations from her, just go in her kennel, leash her up, and walk out very confidently mm -hmm. so that you can share that confidence with her because she doesn't have any right now. Mm -hmm. Don't touch her a lot. And she, she came a long way. We, of course, we loved on her, and she didn't like to be touched a lot. I don't think she understood the whole idea of being petted. A lot of times right. we as humans, you know, do the wrong thing as far as what we do, we do for ourselves, for the dog. I want to pet you. I want to love on you. But in reality, that's not what the animal needs right now. And it's simply because they've been conditioned that way. Right. Uh, in their environment, we've, we've often uh, gone to places on calls where people merely fed their dog and never had any personal contact with them, mm -hmm. left them out on their property. So everybody has a different uh, lifestyle and right. each dog comes from, some from an unknown world and some from a known situation. And it's a matter of reconditioning them. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna get a little further into that in the second half of our show. We're gonna talk about balance and your philosophy okay. of handling dogs, living with dogs, and the things they can do for us and we can do for them. We'll awesome. be back right after this break. Welcome to Poets from the Neighborhood. I'm Louise Collin. And I'm George Spain. And we're going to read you some poetry, poetry written by your friends and neighbors. Bricks, sturdy, heavy, hard, smooth, rough, narrow, wide, ignored as ordinary, yet formed with ancient skills. Bricks offer security without aggression, white to black, rose to cream to gray, touches of purple, magenta, vermilion. The history and moods of earth are revealed by their presence. Used for strength, 
yet brittle. Bricks shed chips when tumbled, but last centuries stack tightly. They stand steady, offer the pleasures of earth, a sense of time, rarely intrude, simply wait for the observer's eye. Moving by Susie Margaret Ross. When she opened the kitchen window, let in the sunlight, suddenly she knew where the salt belonged on the shelf, how the oven worked. Serenity by Louise Collin. A red-tailed hawk glides underneath the angel grace of feathering clouds. Back to the Country by Gail Burnton Had Haddock. These are their roads, not ours, the old timers, that is. They move slowly, noticing the fields and the subtle changes there and in the woods, unconsciously keen from a lifetime of quiet observation. We are newcomers, fresh and roaring from the city, high speed, impatient and impressed with our sudden discovery of what, after all, has been here all along, and what our parents or grandparents perhaps fought hard to escape. Thank you for being with us today. Hello and welcome back to Pet Watch. My guest today is Carla Gentry and we're going to continue talking about her philosophy of dog training and dog ownership. Now you kind of have some basic tenets that you think um, will cause bring a sense of balance, you mm -hmm. call it, between a dog and its owner. Mm -hmm. Now tell me what those, what those things are that you concentrate on or you believe are part of that. The main formula would be um, exercise, discipline, and then affection in that order, and then uh, rules, boundaries, and limitations. Okay, so exercise that. first, mm -hmm. and then what were the others? Discipline, discipline then affection. And effect, then mm -hmm. affection. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you withhold affection a little bit until the, they earn it a little bit. They earn it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, how, what are some of the things you do with dogs that you have to teach them those things? Um, when, when I'm at the shelter and walking a shelter dog, and of course you have to do a little cut the shelter dogs a little slack as far as what you do with your dog at home versus the shelter sure. dogs because they don't get out much. But I do try to test and see how respectful they are of space, my personal space, that kind of thing. And I start that at the kennel. I go in to leash them up before I let them come out. I challenge them to cross the doorway before I invite them out. I try to get them to sit calmly and then I invite them out. And then we do that at the next door and at the next door. It may take a few seconds longer, but it doesn't take very long. And usually um, I get the behavior I'm looking for from most all the dogs just for, for asking for it. And you're looking for yourself to be crossing those passage, those points before the, mm -hmm. the dog yes. and not being pulled. You right. see people being pulled down the street by mm -hmm. a dog. It's, it's simply with a little work you can reverse that to where mm -hmm. the human is in charge. Right. And because the human can make judgments, it only makes sense that we be the one. <laughs> well, they feel much more calm and secure if right. I'm in control and in charge. And by letting them know that before we ever leave their kennel or that doorway or the building, mm -hmm. when they get outside, they have a better sense of, okay, I don't have to handle everything. She can handle this. It's just, it's kind of basic leadership, but... Mm -hmm. um, they need to know that somebody else is leading them and they don't have to be. Most dogs that come to the shelter are out of balance in some form or fashion right. due to no fault of their own. Mm -hmm. um, and they've not probably had good leadership or exercise or discipline or the mm -hmm. right order of things to, to, to find balance. Right. And sometimes exercise is the key mm -hmm. because that pent up uh, frustration energy in the, in the uh, dog especially mm -hmm. can't be expressed in any way when it sits right. on a couch or stays in a crate well, it, all day. It piles up and it, it begins to explode. Right. And we sit at that shelter, shelter a lot because they do have a lot of undrained energy that needs to be drained mm -hmm. so that they feel okay. Otherwise they feel like, you know, I'm going right. to explode. Right. And it's a matter of getting them used to that. And mm -hmm. and so we've had exercise and then discipline. Discipline. Okay. And that's every dog can be taught simple commands just by repetition mm -hmm. and by learning or maybe reading a few or watching a few videos mm -hmm. about how to if you want your dog to have certain behaviors that they will comply with, like sit, lay, come, mm -hmm. fetch, whatever, um, people can read up on that and discover that dogs want 
that structure. They do want balance. Yeah. They like structure. At the shelter, we're now trying to match our pets and our mm -hmm. owners up through a program called Meet Your Match, which is an ASPCA program that asks questions mm -hmm. about the ad adopters who come in the building. And what do you like to ask people when they come in? I like to generally ask about their current lifestyle. Um, their daily routine, not what they want it to be or what they're, it's going to be, but what is mm -hmm. it today so that we know what that animal can expect when it gets to their home and to help meet the right energy so that we find an animal that has the right, um, you don't want too, too high, you want to find the right, the same energy or lower than their current lifestyle. Now what do we do for the pets themselves, the animals that are in the shelter? Have you been involved in any of those evaluations? I have, the okay. canineality, I haven't done the felineality, but I have the canineality and um, it's a great, um, it's a great formula to follow. It gives us a real good idea of the um, energy level of the dog mm -hmm. and um, what we can expect when that dog gets to a home. We get to see what it does when it's left alone, when it's unattended. Uh, is it playing? Is it whining at the door? Things like that. Have you ever done it to Ella, a canine LT on her? No, <laughs> I have not. <laughs> I think her personality is completely formed yeah. and she's pretty uh, secure in everything that she does yeah. in, at your, in your pack at your house yes. <laughs> yes. with the Maltese as yes. a leader. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You're a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. um, you. Now, the other three tenants you were going to tell us about, the three, other three uh, methods that mm -hmm. you follow uh, the rules, boundaries, and limitations. Okay, and we were gonna, we were. I was thinking about it because our we want that for our children, mm -hmm. but we also want it for our animals. And and you said it takes some time for a dog to learn what its rules and limitations mm -hmm. and boundaries are. It comes from repetition. So once you begin to follow that, and it's really interesting at the shelter, it happens really quickly. You can sit, but sweet, sweet, sit down, baby. Good girl. Um, it happens really quickly at the shelter, um, just working with the dog, asking for the respect, the rules, the boundaries. When I talk about boundaries, I'm talking about doorways sometimes, or you're not allowed to pass me, you're not allowed to pull me, you're not mm -hmm. allowed to do certain things. And of course, like I said, you have to cut shelter dogs a little slack here and there because mm -hmm. they're shelter dogs and they you know, haven't been out of their kennel sure. a lot. So. And children don't grow up without somebody telling them what's right, right. and wrong, and right. neither do animals. It's just right. a different method. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's maybe a reward system works better for animals and affection, you said, right. comes after mm -hmm. you obey. Right. So, and it, it's not too strict. It's not that strict. It's, yeah. It, but you know, you do. Ne you don't need to give pet attention or pet a dog that's you know giving you bad behavior. That's right. Not acting properly. If you give me a little good behavior, you've done what I ask of you. Then I'm going to give you some positive reinforcement for that. And people will begin to see at the shelter when we kick off the Meet Your Match program officially this month. Um, they will begin to see color coding mm -hmm. and names on kennels. Right. Things like I'm a busy body, I'm a constant, a busy bee, I'm mm -hmm. a constant companion, I'm a couch potato. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, that's going to adjust right. a little bit when they get into yes. the home setting. Yes. But it's a great way to, if you come in with low energy and, and you want a quiet dog, you don't want to pick the one that... Right. It's a great way to know what, you're, what you can expect from this animal when you get at home based on this assessment. It's not who the animal may always be. Um, once they get in your home, they typically calm down because they are in a shelter setting when they're tested and it's, you know, mm -hmm. they are under a different level of stress than they will be in your home. Sure, and we're calling it Find Your Soulmate and, it, and often um, you, you've told me before that mm -hmm. people need balance in their lives and so do dogs. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes a dog can bring that into a person's life in a way that they didn't right. expect. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've shared stories about people we know who have been lonely, have been depressed, have had all kinds of the things that happen to all of us mm -hmm. in everyday life, but yet their pet, when they go home, mm -hmm. is the one thing they can depend on to give right. them un unconditional love. And, they and it can get, get them through, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I think psychiatrists maybe ought to be prescribing cats and dogs to people sometimes because they, they do have a calming effect. Mm -hmm. And we've seen it over and over with people we know and people who've adopted animals. Mm -hmm. um, uh, even special case animals, we had the deaf dog for yes, a long time. Melanie. Melanie, and, and I was just reading a story about a police officer in another state who adopted five yes, deaf I dogs. Yes, I saw that story. Yeah, and mm -hmm. they all looked like little Melanies. They, they did, they, they did. They were all white and, and they were beautiful and he had a knack. Yes. And then that opened a place inside of him to give back mm -hmm. by taking in more mm -hmm. of these uh, animals with a special need. And a, d a deaf dog is very special needs and yes. responds 
to hand signals mm -hmm. and uh, different things that other dogs may not uh, respond to uh, but can be trained to mm -hmm. do. They adapt. Yeah. And you know, Melanie's family adopted Roscoe recently, so they have a second deaf oh, dog. Oh, wow. Also. So they've got two. Yes. Okay. That is so great. And I'm, I'm thank you for being here and sharing with your with us your philosophy, which we want to give credit to Caesar Milano, yes. the dog whisperer, because yes. you're kind of a follower of his. Absolutely. And these things that you've suggested today of um, discipline and reward and boundaries and so forth are all part of his philosophy. Mm -hmm. So it's it may not be for everybody. Right. There are a lot of different methods mm -hmm. of handling animals out there, but if you are interested Stay. in in finding that balance between yourself and your pet, that's, yes. it's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'd like to share with our audience um, what's coming up. March is here and our theme, like I mentioned, is Meet Your Match. It's the ASPCA program where we evaluate all the pets at the shelter and classify them by personality. And we even ask you to take a quiz when you come in. Uh, we're kicking that off in any pet that's classified as green which is a color code for one of the ASPCA personalities. All the green pets are half off during the month of March. That's dogs and cats. Just look on their kennels. And then on Monday, March 17th, it'll be a big day at the shelter. We'll have the St. Catrick's Day and St. Pity's Day. And the adoption fee will be waived on the first 17 cats approved with approved applications that day. And the adoption fee for all pity and bully mixes is only $10 on St. Patrick's Day. That evening, we are having a Raise the Stakes fundraiser at the Logan's in Cool Springs. Uh, that's from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. A portion of their proceeds on St. Patrick's Day will go to the shelter, and we thank Logan's for doing that. So stop by there, St. Patrick's Day night. Get a coupon from our website that you need to show to them when you go to eat for us to benefit. And I also have another major announcement, which you'll be hearing a lot about soon, is our shelter has been chosen to compete in the ASPCA Rachel Ray $100,000 Challenge this summer during the months of June, July, and August. We will be trying to save more lives during those three months uh, than we did in the same period the year before. So we're honored to be in that competition. We're looking forward to it. And mark your calendars now for a June 7 big kickoff party at the shelter for that challenge. And I won't tell you the theme yet, but we will be rolling out the red carpet. And if your business or your community group would like to help us in some way, we can provide a speaker. We'd love to have a fundraiser, bring a dog out if it's appropriate, bring cats, or even have an adoption event on your property. So let us know if you're interested. We're looking to have at least two events every week during the months of the challenge, which are June, July, and August. Or anytime you want to work with us, just give us a call at the shelter. We're located at 106 Claude Yates Drive, next to Franklin High School. If you're thinking of adopting, you might want to go to www.adoptwcac.org. Check out our pets there. But they do change every day, so I encourage you to come by the shelter. We actually have a wait list. If you want a certain type of dog, you can get on our list and we'll call you if one comes in. Um, and if you find a dog, please remember that our shelter's goal is to adopt every animal out that we receive in. So you're doing us a real favor to the family that might have lost that dog because we will reunite them if we can. And if not, we will get their animal healthy and put into adoption. And put them in a forever home. I'd also like to mention that uh, our rabies clinics will be coming up in the month of April in different points in the community on every Saturday. Um, there will be a list of those in the local media and on our website. So if you get your shots in the spring, remember those Saturdays in April are the time to do it. And if you'd like to become a volunteer like Carla, we'd love to have you too. Go to that adoptwcac.org website to the very top where it says volunteer and find out about our next cat or dog volunteer orientation class. Carla, I want to thank you and Miss Ella who has made herself at home <laughs> here today. She's such a sweetie and we appreciate you so much. Thank you, Debbie. At the shelter and thank you for having sharing us. with us your philosophy. Ella's <laughs> honored to be here. Oh, she looks honored. <laughs> thank you all for thank watching you. Pet Watch and we'll see you again next month. I could talk to the animals Just imagine it Chatting with a chimp and chimpanzee 
Imagine talking to a tiger, chatting with a cheetah. What a neat achievement it would be if we could talk to the animals, learn all their languages, maybe take an animal degree. I'd study elephant and eagle, buffalo and beagle, alligator, guinea pig, and flea. 